hello part two of our logic IC based traffic light controller so yeah you remember this circuit uh, we discussed this circuit in part one to give our simulation of the timing uh, circuit uh, which is the building block of the timing uh, function so our next a circuit that we are going to describe is going to be the one that is attached here the one that is going to control how this circuit uh, works uh, the interface between the HMI the human machine interface and the logic uh, timing circuit so before then as usual our script electronic waste benefit use as much electronic waste as possible and remember our safety uh, warning here electricity can kill please make sure you are experienced or you are working with someone with experience with electricity uh, because electricity can kill electricity can get damage equipment electricity can cause fires yeah so the the dangers involved with working in with electricity must also you have prior knowledge of electronics it's a uh, it's a our expectation that you you actually read you you have information about what is electronics the components knowledge of the components how they work and all that we are not going to do any teaching of electronics here this is just a description of the circuits as they are not a tutorial on electronics and we expect that you are at least 10 years and above uh, yeah you can be below but uh, I doubt if you can actually undertake yes, this one uh, this uh, uh, these projects so yeah it's just circuit description no electronic engineering uh, lessons or tutorials and you can use this circuit as a training is uh, industrial uh, uh, equipment uh, I think uh, the first part we described what we expect from this you can use it at school you can use it anywhere where it is applicable this is a traffic light a controller and uh, the components as usual yeah basic this circuit is not programmable it's a straightforward logic I see logic gets uh, put together you can uh, pre-make your printed circuit board or you can use the ferrobot uh, you can populate a ferrobot you can populate your pre-made uh, printed circuit board use the schematic draw your uh, PCB layout and send for manufacture or if you can manufacture yourself it's okay right and uh, use software for the schematic drawing or printed circuit but layout and thank you for your time and uh, we hope that you will enjoy uh, all that is required is your time your patience your passion and your dedication so welcome let's go on to our circuit I would be actually switching between the circuits uh, so that you can actually see the relationship between the two circuits and then later on as we go on you actually switching between the circuits as uh, we go on so it will get more and more like confusing but I hope you actually understand what's uh, we are, uh, what I'm trying to actually share with you so yeah but the circuits are very straightforward so now we go for the manual control circuit now now remember from our logic control circuit it had uh, a line with uh, input and output uh, connections uh, let me switch back like I was saying yeah this part here you see there's one there's number two there's number three then there's LK1 a equal to number four number five number six so these connections here are coming here they are coming here number one th here is number four then number three is here number six is here number two is here number five is here 
LK1, LK2. So 1 goes to 1, 4 goes to 4, 3 goes to 3, 6 goes to 6, 2 goes to 2, 5 goes to 5, LK1 goes to LK1, LK2 goes to LK2. As you can see, the arrows are pointing the direction. It's coming from that board, coming here. Like number 1 is actually coming to this board. Number four also coming to this board, but number three is going to the board. Number six is going to the board. So let's check number one coming to the board. We switch over. Number one going to that board. So that's why it is at that board. It's coming to the board. Uh, number four is also going to that board. That's why it is coming to the board. And you remember number six was actually coming out of that board, the manual control board, going coming back to the main control board, to the logic board. So this is how you are actually going to connect these two uh, circuits together. They can be on the same board or separate, whichever you would want to. If you are going to draw these circuits, you can draw them as one complete uh, circuit. I've done this just for clarity, otherwise I would have drawn them on one complete uh, circuit diagram. So uh, what is coming here on this circuit? What is uh, going on on this circuit? This circuit is actually a control for manual uh, interaction between a person and the, the traffic light controller. So what is coming here is actually uh, inputs one from the HMI board which will come here uh, to, be to be connected here so, such that these are actually going to the HMI board the green one and the green two because they are coming to this uh, circuit here then the strobe is actually coming from the HMI board and uh, you can see here also there is the manual uh, input and then there is the automatic uh, input coming from the HMI board and then also the green uh, signals uh, which is on pin number number f one and four here yeah, the connection on pin on the connection number one and connection number four it's also going to the pedestrian circuit which we will discuss later. So remember, the pedestrian circuit is also connected here. So the HMI board is connected here, the pedestrian circuit is also connected here. This is our second circuit, remember. And our, our third circuit will be the HMI board, our fourth will be the pedestrian board. Now, the HMI board also will have these inputs uh, to this board, the, the stop and the run. Uh, input here, yeah. stop input and then the run input. Right, this circuit has got how many ICs? That's one IC, and then that's another IC, second IC, and then the third IC. This IC is an, an end gate 4081 IC, it's a logic IC end gate, and then uh, two of them is yes, end gates again set so each end gate will have four end gates inside one chip and then uh, another uh, chip with four end gates inside and this one is 4013 has got two circuits this is a set reset uh, flip-flop mm, yeah it's a set reset flip-flop a set reset uh, circuit uh, the delay you can use a D type or you can uh, configure it to work the way you want. So this is a 4013 uh, IC and it has two circuits in, in it. And I've uh, used, uh, you require two, both of them. So here the end gate, you require all the four gates and also here for the gate. So you basically have three circuits on that so you control uh, circuit. So what happens is, with this circuit is uh, remember uh, if it is coming from the main control board the, the logic board well uh, 
it is uh, like you have said uh, that green was coming uh, here pin number one remember when I said you can loop pin number one and number two straight on without a problem and then th that circuit would work why it is so because you have a green signal coming here a green signal is coming here and then here it goes through the end gate if this end gate if the auto is a high here and a green signal is a high here you have a high here that's an end gate function and then it goes through to two so you can link pin number one and pin number two straight on and you that circuit will function let me show you like i was saying here remember when it stepped to q1 pin number two you will go out and then come back as number two here so you can link number one and two together and still the circuit will work so this is what i'm talking about you can link number one and number two and actually disregard this one this get but now this circuit is actually made not to disregard this circuit it actually works as determined by the conditions of this gets and these conditions actually are affected by the person so what happens is if you are in automatic mode meaning the circuit is running automatically it's running by itself this signal here is a high and that signal is a, is a low these are alternate signals either of them is high and the other one is low not uh, having the same condition both of them at the same time you can't have a low here and a low here no or neither a high here and a high here no it's only a high here and a low here or a low here and sorry a, a high here and a low there for the first a normal default condition this one is a high automatic and then when a green comes here it comes through it goes to two and then if the other side side number two now the green also coming remember this becomes low a green come it goes through now i see 6d uh, comes through here pin number 13 goes to five so remember i was also saying you can actually loop number four and number five without a problem disregard this one but now it's now coming through here and also going out back to the so it's in automatic mode the green comes and then just close back because it's in automatic mode right now suppose you go into manual mode and remember this is done by the HMI board you are actually controlling the HMI board so that it gives you these signals and the HMI board is also having a feed of the, these two green signals so this is the input to this board from the mm, main logic board from the main logic board you are only having these two signals the green signals coming to the control manual control board so you also feed that these two green signals to the HMI board and you also feed it to the pedestrian board so suppose you now have a manual condition or in the mode is now changed from automatic to manual meaning the manual signal input is now high the automatic is now low and if you have a law here remember this is end gate function any law on the input will always maintain a law at the output so pin number two and pin number five becomes law because here now it's a what it's a law so from back to our circuit you see if pin number two is a law pin number five is a law this timer becomes inactive you are in manual mode so this timer is inactive so no automatic switching this timer becomes inactive it's actually a, a, 
uh, taken out it's not going to function so because this one is a low that one is a low so you are not going to have a trigger here so the two timers for the green are actually taken out but how do we now step on from green to the other it's now through these logic gates this one is a high now the manual signal is a high so you have the high here and the high here for an output <coughs> to be considered you now have to look at what is the conditions of these ones these two now suppose number one is the green one so green signal here we are looking at that gate and that gate here we know it's in manual mode there is a high there so what is the condition of that the condition of that deter is determined by uh, now the condition of that one this is the strobe the strobe is the signal that comes when you want to change from one direction one uh, green side to the other so it's actually a pulse that comes here yeah, from the HMI board after pressing a key you know, describe the circuit uh, as we get to the third clip I hope it will be the third uh, clip so the strobe signal will actually uh, affect these two gates now we have said the signal that is high is the green number one here the one that is coming here G1 so G1 is a high so here with the high the strobe is a pulse that comes it goes high and then goes low so if the strobe goes high you have a high and a high here here it becomes a high remember here also is a high so you have a high and a high and a high so you have a high on 3 so this high on 3 uh, is actually the time effect on this input here number 3 this is number 3 it comes here as a high pulse which will actually be going high and then later on it will go low after a predetermined time and remember this green has been on for some time until you actually effect a strop signal or a power signal that goes to the to the manual control board so you have a green time here which you will now uh, uh, control using the manual uh, it means say okay you wait for three seconds and then you strop the, the, the circuit so that this three here becomes high which is transferred to that one remember if it's transferred to that one it comes high and then goes to low so you have a power that clocks from green to amber then the rest takes over so this is how this circuit is working the manual control box a strobe comes here a high and a high this green is the high and then a high here and then a high and a high because it's in manual mode then a high goes to three the same for second side the green number two if this one is a low so if you have a low here there is a low and a low here so this circuit is not going to be affected so it's only this one which is a high now if you go with a strobe if a pulse which is a strobe comes and this one is a high because the green now number two is, is high you have a high here and a, a high which is a strobe here and then you have a high here the manual signal is high so we have a high high and then goes out as number six so number six here is here coming through the diode remember number six is high comes here and this diode remember we must take out uh, the repetition and then comes as a high here to be enable and clocks this one to from green remember the, the number four was high so this green is now moving from green to amber to number four and then the amber takes over and then comes to there right so this is how this circuit works straightforward like that simple a strobe here and then 
this one's uh, actually switching and then if it's in auto mode it just comes straight going out now the other circuit now uh, the other function remember from our peak version you have that manual automatic mode you have also the stop and run mode it's also available on this one so suppose it is in run mode it means you have a high here this high here remember as you can see this is a 4013 uh, IC a high here will actually reset this circuit a high here will reset this circuit these two can only be one high and the other one low so if this one is a high this one will be low if this one is a high this one will be low so if this one is a high this one is low so you have a low here and a low there this will remain low regardless of what is happening here so if it is in run mode this one is actually reset and these two here actually a low because the circuit is reset when it's reset the number 12 is actually a high and number 13 is a low so the reset mode Q bar is high reset mode Q bar is high set mode Q is high so when it's in run mode the Q is actually a low number 1 number 13 is a low and these are actually going to LK1, LK2 so LK1, LK2 going back to our logic board is here LK1, LK2 so LK1 is just coming here as a law so it's not going to affect anything here is a law it's not going to affect anything right so going back to our circuit suppose we have now gone into the stop mode which means this one is now a low and this one is now a high if this one is a high it means here there is a high here is the high so depending on the inputs here will determine whether this one is going whatever is going to happen here but remember this is a green signal green number one green number two so if you have red uh, or red you so don't have any green signal on the on the on the on the traffic lights it means these signals are a low and a low so always a low there if this is a low this one is a low it means here we low nothing happens but suppose any one of them is green okay, suppose green number one comes on is high so we have a high here and remember we are in stop mode this one is a high so high and high this is a high so you set this one which means q1 becomes a high q1 becomes a high so when q1 becomes a high it means lk1 becomes a high lk1 becoming a high let's see what happens to our logic lk1 is a high now yes a high so it was a high here so what happens if this one remains a high whatever the conditions is happening remember we said this is green number one is actually a high so it means here is a high so this second here is in high mode so it will go from green to amber and then comes back to what to red that f that uh, sequence from green to amber and then resets to red and then when this one gets to red remember this one is actually triggered to get an output of a high here and the, an output of a high on a green is timed uh, this is a timer circuit a high here which is coming here is a high and that high you are supposed to go there and step this clock so that it actually goes to green because it is it was high because this one was the, the green one this one was red so this one was green it goes to amber then comes to red and now it was going to step this one to green but now this one was going 
cos high and then later cos low but here remember our LK1 is always high and that high and that high whether this high goes away it doesn't matter because this high is always there so it's an orchid if any of this is a high this one always be a high so it's not going to step that one it remains high so the circuit remains in what in the red position this one remains red that one remains as red until you remove this high so this is how you actually lock the circuit or maintain a red and a red signal or all lights are now in red signal until you remove this high and how do you take that high out if you say okay this is a police officer now maybe the VIP were passing now you have maintained the lights to be in red condition now everything is now you have to be reset back to normal it means you now have to make the circuit to run mode it means changing this one to from high to a low and then this one becomes in a high so it means if this one becomes low these circuits are taken out they are not going to affect anything because here is going to remain a low but this one is coming to a high now so when this one comes a high it resets these two but which one is reset is actually this one because it is the one that was set this one was already reset if you reset a reset uh, if you reset a reset uh, a flip flop well uh, it doesn't change it's reset but this one was set so you reset it so this one is coming from a low to a high sorry from a, a high to a low so LK1 goes low when LK1 goes low what happens to our logic we go back to our logic LK becoming a low it's now the same as it would have happened if it was a timer so it was a high coming to a low so this clock or uh, this counter actually steps because it's coming from a high going to a low on that part here so this is how it it's the same as well with this one okay too so you can see that it actually maintains a high here if LK2 is high this is maintaining a high and that high is coming here even if this one comes high and low it's not going to change because this one is maintained a high so now this is how you actually maintain either side so when this one was green to actually uh, give a, a, a high here if it's in lock or in stop mode to give high on the LK2 and actually um, wait until you remove that high and actually step that side so go back to our circuit so this is our stop circuit yeah so now uh, so much about it and uh, the next circuit we are going to discuss is actually the HMI uh, board which is connected here the HMI board connected here and there and also here so we have four main parts this part that part that part remember the strobe and then the green signal is going to the HMI board and then the strobe coming from the HMI board coming here remember it's just a pulse that comes to actually step to the next side in manual mode and then uh, the manual mode and the auto mode is actually changed in the HMI board and also the stop and the run mode are actually changed in the HMI board so we are going to discuss the HMI board in our next uh, video clip and how we are actually interchanging between the two and uh, normally the logic uh, the logic falls out because we have already discussed the logic how this one is connected to the logic so it's now this one and the HMI board then later on the pedestrian the pedestrian oh, 
it can be discussed on its own because well, it's just a signal going straight to the pedestrian to pedestrian circuit. So our next video is the HMI board, right? And yeah, that's so much about it and feedback. So we would like to hear from you. As always, tauraimirimi at gmail.com. Thank you very much for your time.